Okay, today this video is going to be about how to get an A-star in A-level chemistry. Now, loads of people think, oh, an A-star, you have to be extremely smart. It's impossible unless you have a photographic memory. Well, that's not true. I managed to get an A-star in chemistry. I don't have a photographic memory. I managed to get an A-star in maths as well and an A in biology. So on results day, how do we make you look like this guy here? Extremely happy, maybe slightly psychotic because he's just done two years of A-levels. But how do we make you this happy? Well, I'm going to take you through some of the general things that I found out over A-level. Some of the books I use, some useful websites, things like that. And there's one key thing at the end that was the difference between me getting a C and an A-star. And I'm going to tell you that secret later on. So first of all, the general things. Well, everyone has a different learning style. You may have heard this over and over again. Um, from teachers, anything like that. But try it out, try different things out. Try reading a book. Oh, if you take things in from reading a book, fantastic, you found a really good way. If you don't, okay, maybe try reading a book, writing down notes at the same time, does that help you? No, okay, maybe read the book, do questions at the end. A lot of textbooks have a few questions at the end of each uh, sort of double page spread, each topic, or over an entire like chapter, they may have uh, summary questions at the end or something, try them out. You know past papers, stuff like that. Just try loads of different things out. Writing post-it notes, you know, listening to podcasts, everything, watching videos, loads of different things out there. Try them all out, see what works best for you. That's one thing I did not do at AES. I just read a book, it didn't help me much. Now it wasn't until A2 where I really started to understand things and that got me my A star. Time management, that's another big one. Work hard, play hard. The thing is, you may think People at A-level just work all the time to get an A-star. I think they're sitting there 9am till 9pm, 12 hours a day, every single day of their life for two years to get an A-star. Well, that's not true. It's all about time management. One thing that I found was uh, quite true at university, our lecturer said, if you can 9 till 5 it, five days a week, the evening and weekends are yours and you can still get a first. Well, to be honest, it's the same kind of thing with A-levels. If you can 9 till 5 it, five days a week, in which you may be at school 9 to 3, 9 to 4, maybe even 9 to 5, then you can usually have the weekends and um, evenings free, minus whatever homework you need to do, because unfortunately at school you still get homework and stuff like that. How I did it? Well, I can't work well in the evenings. For some reason, I get too tired. I like to just get stuff done in the mornings. So what I used to do, so obviously I'd do my school day, I wouldn't do anything in the evenings. Then on Saturday, I'd do equivalent of a school day, and then... The Sunday was mine and every single evening drew, um, during the week. That's how I did it. One thing that I really shouldn't have put down here um, in little writing, ask questions even when others get annoyed. So <clears throat> during sixth form, I was always asking my chemistry teacher uh, questions, even when it got to the point of one of my best friends that sat next to me went, why do you ask so many questions? It's so irritating. Well, the thing is, I like to know why. If you want to be a good scientist, never stop asking why. That's how every single scientific breakthrough has happened. Why are trees, uh, why are the leaves on trees green? Well, once upon a time, no one knew that answer. Someone asked why. You know, um, why does this apple fall off a tree? Well, once upon a time, no one knew the, the law of gravity. Now we do, why? Because someone asked why. <laughs> That's one key thing you always need to know, always ask questions, always ask why. Because in my opinion, when you understand why something happens, you will remember it far better than just learning a useless fact like, oh, this complex is blue. Well, you know quite a few objects that are blue, you know quite a few objects that are different colours. Well, how are you going to remember that that particular thing is blue when you have a million other things throughout your life to remember? Well, the answer simply is understand why. <laughs> Because when you can uh, rationalise observations, that's when they stick in your head. So always ask questions. So they're just some general points. Well, I'd like to take you through some of the books I used because they were very, very good. And I mean, I managed to get an A-star from using these three books. So why can't you? Well, I did OCR and I believe they brought in a new spec um, at the start of 2015 or 2016, something like that. And, uh, oh, well, this is why the, the old spec was also st still going on for A2 students. Well, there'll, there'll be books by the same people, and I know the content hasn't changed a huge amount. There have been a few things added in as time's gone on into the new spec. 
but largely they're very, very similar. So for AS, our school gave us a textbook um, to use for the year, and this is uh, the one, OCR Chemistry. Um, and yeah, there's a picture of it. Feel free to look on Amazon or anything like that. It's a very good book. You know, it's not too much writing. They broke it up, some, some pictures, some diagrams, things like that. It's not a, a massive uh, cluster of words, which is quite handy when you're sitting looking at it for an entire year. Nice and colourful. At A2, we then had the book by the same people. Obviously, like I said, the first one's for AS, this one's for A2. Also a, a very good book, explains concepts quite well. Um, but the only problem with these ones, they don't usually say why. And that's the problem with A-levels, they don't always say why, which is why I was always asking questions in lessons, because A-levels, uh, a lot of it's just, remember these facts, they don't explain why. So again, ask questions. And the other book that uh, I used was uh, Chemistry 2 for OCR, and it looks a bit like this. And um, it, was just, it was just nice at A2 to have a second book to refer back to, because um, A2 is where I really hit my stride in A-level chemistry and got my grades up to an A-star. So there are three books I used. Very good. I would uh, thoroughly recommend them. You know, they may not cover all the topics or cover more topics than you, than you um, need to know, but especially if you're doing the OCR exam board, they're written in the way that they want you to understand it. And if you're even somewhere like AQA or even over in America doing um, some other qualifications, it's just nice to have a different um, wording as such to understand different topics. There are also several websites you can use. These are just three I put on there. There's probably thousands out there at the end of the day, hundreds or thousands, something like that. But these, these three are quite good. I mean, I had a look at A-level chemistry a few times and yeah, it's quite good. It explains concepts quite well. And Chem Guide is also uh, another good one. A Level Chem, I mean, I personally never used it, but it's got some um, big hits on Google. So, I mean, it's probably quite a good one. I had a quick flick through and it, it seems okay. It's uh, laid out a bit differently, but you know, you may like that. Go away, have a look at them, try them out. Even if you don't use them all the time, like, uh, um, like me, I didn't use them all the time. I just went, oh, I don't quite understand a topic, went on there. Oh, they explain it a slightly different way. Fantastic, I now understand. So go away and have a look at them. And you can also uh, watch videos and things such as my YouTube videos. Yeah, so you can find loads of resources out there depending how you learn, whether you like reading, watching, doing, stuff like that. Now, the best thing that happened to me, A-level chemistry, past papers. They are the sole reason I got an A-star. So everyone learns differently, like I said. For me, I tend towards doing things. I tend to learn that way. I read a book, I don't take in. I read a book, take some notes. Well, I, I absorb a little bit, you know, but past papers are really where I hit my stride as such. My old biology teacher, sixth form, said, if you understand everything in the textbooks, if you understand everything on the spec, like the back of your hand, you're probably still only going to get a B. Yeah, maybe a high B or something like that, but you're still probably only going to get a B. Well, how do we then go up to an A? How do we then go up to an A star? Well, it's called applying your knowledge. How do we apply uh, that knowledge? Well, there's only one way to go about that and one way to practice that, past papers. Honestly, you see so many situations, so many scenarios that you would not otherwise see by doing past papers. Yeah, some of the questions at the back book you know, they're quite good. They give you sort of a, a taster as such, you know, like an introduction to them. And yeah, they may they may prove handy in an exam one or two percent of the time, but past papers for your exam board, they are written in the way that they will be written in your actual exam. At the end of the day, the exams are written by usually the same people each year, you know, unless someone retires, something like that. So <clears throat> go to them, have a look last year, the year before, a few years ago, however long um, your exam board's been running, have a look at all the papers, even look at the old specs. The old specs are really handy because they sometimes actually, I noticed with OCR, kind of chop and change some of the questions from the old um, spec. So there was something called uh, legacy papers were the old spec for us. I had a look on there and um, I remember doing some of them questions and then um, in the mock paper we got, I was like, I swear I've come across this question. I look back to the legacy paper, it's the exact same question. <laughs> They've just changed some of their numbers around. So honestly, look at the past papers. They are very, very handy to do. And to be honest, that's probably what got me up from about a C or B up to an A star, just by doing them. 
because then you can learn the mark schemes and look at the mark schemes too, because it's stupid at A level. They say, oh, explain X. And then you say, oh, this and this and this happens in sort of a layman's terms as such, when realistically they want an answer with these three keywords in them to get all the marks. So what you said is perfectly um, correct and true, and that's how most people would explain it, but you would get, say, two out of the four marks because you didn't put those keywords in. Well, how are you going to know what those keywords are unless you do the past papers that they want? You just don't. Because at the end of the day, you know those keywords, you've revised, you know it all, but you just explain it a slightly different way. Why? Because you're human. We're not a robot that's uh, programmed to do it in a certain way, are we? So again, do past papers. That's my one big secret. Past papers. Please, please, please do them if you want an A star. So one thing I want to know, uh, that I want you to know, is what I wish I did and um, what I sort of learned from. So back when I did A-levels, I had a AS, I did that year, and then I had an exam. Then I did A2, then I had an exam, or exams I should say, and I got an AES and an A2 qualification, and obviously I had chance to retake, and I mean that's always an option for people, but I didn't do any retakes, so it just goes to show you can get an A star first time round, you don't need to do retakes to get it. So because I had sort of two different years, I could learn from my mistakes in AES. And one, well, I say one thing, three things I've learned throughout A-levels is start early. With AS, I didn't start till uh, sort of end of Easter holidays. Um, because I was just like, well, I've, I've done all this work, you know, hey, Mike, I'm sure it'll be okay. I didn't really do any revision for GCSEs and it went okay. Well, it turns out it, it doesn't go as well. I mean, yeah, I still, still did okay in terms of grades. I got some A's and B's and C's and things like that at AS, but... You know, I was looking, I want to go to a good university and things like that. Well, they all want like A's and A stars. What am I going to do to get this up? Well, one thing I learned, start early. At AS, I started at the end of Easter holidays, which is about six weeks before exams, maybe even less than that. Uh, at A2, I started um, at the Christmas holidays. I didn't do a lot over Christmas, some of you are probably thinking, oh god, why, 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 why is he saying do Christmas hol holidays, um, I want to relax. Well, yeah, relax. Again, time management, like I said in the first slide. Enjoy your Christmas and that. But at the same time, do a bit of work. You know, even if it's just, well, I have seven days a week, three days a week, I'm going to do four hours each day and enjoy the rest. Well, do that. Because it's going to help. And where I really started to kick off my work is when I went back in January. I um, did more and more work, <clears throat> and honestly, it helped so, so much. I managed to understand um, before Easter 50% of the topics I'd covered, which meant at Easter I only had to really learn, well, when I say learn, I mean sort of um, patch all the holes in my learning from the year for 50% of it and then just revise. Whereas if I hadn't done that, like I did at AS, I had to sort of patch all the holes from the whole year and then revise in a very short time. It's almost impossible. So start early. I mean, I got an A star from starting sort of Christmas time, probably middle of Christmas. You know, do that. Take a week off over the sort of Christmas and New Year's and the other week, do some work and you'll be fine. The other one I learned was work harder and freeze. So you may have, um, may have a gap in your day of an hour or two where you have no lessons, depending what your sixth form college school is like. Um, I didn't used to work in those, AAS I didn't, um, A2 I didn't for the first term and then I did uh, for the second term and it helped so, so much. And again, that kind of comes in with the starting early, start working your freeze early because it will it'll give you your evenings and your weekends really. Um, if you have 10 hours a week of uh, free periods and you choose to do no work in them, well those 10 hours you're going to have to make up at home, aren't you, in your evenings and weekends and I'd rather have the evenings and weekends off and do something with my friends, for example. So, Another one that you may not think of is do something in summer. Well, you finish your exams. Some schools don't go back after AS exams. I mean, you may not have AS exams anymore because they've uh, sort of changed the, the spec and how they lay out their exams now. And obviously, if you're over uh, in America or something like that and you're doing the equivalent, you may not have this, but... Uh, 
you may go back to school and then have summer holiday or you might just have an extra long summer holiday. And during that time, I noticed I forgot a lot. I honestly forgot basic things like, oh, when you um, add carbon dioxide to lime water, it turns misty. Just simple facts like that I've known from GCSE. I just forgot over summer. So it may be worth, you know, just once a week, just for an hour or two, just have a quick flick through the book. Just remind yourself of some of the concepts because it will help a lot in A2. So I probably spent the first four or five weeks of um, A2 trying to remember everything from AS and going through my notes before I could even do the A2 work because I'd forgotten. So try and do that, you know. Maybe get some work experience as well. I did a placement at a local scientific research institution for four weeks and it's uh, really beneficial and helps on the CV a lot. You may not be thinking about your CV at the moment. But trust me, when you apply to universities, which will probably be within a couple of months of that summer, uh, you want to put that on there because they will love it. They will show that uh, it will show that you're enthusiastic and eager, and they will want you. And you may even get an unconditional offer if you're lucky. So just a few things to bear in mind. So <clears throat> this is the end. A couple of things I want you to take away is do past papers. Find or find your learning style. You know, I think past papers are always the best thing to do, regardless of your learning style, um, because you can read questions, have a go, and then you can read the mark schemes. Um, but equally, you're having a go, so you've got the best of both worlds of reading and taking things in, and practicing and taking things in. Start now. I mean, it's the 31st of December, so happy New Year uh, for tomorrow. But start now, or very very soon, whenever you watch this video, because you've had a term to settle in. Um, if you're doing AS or A2, you've had a term to settle into your new sort of workload and things like that. So start now. You know what you have to do. Just go do it. Don't waste time because it will make things easier in the long run. You can have sort of a, an average pace throughout now to exams or you can have sort of a, a lazy time now and then suddenly you're probably not sleeping at night because you're panicking a couple of weeks before the exams. So I recommend starting now. I hope you found the video uh, useful and uh, helpful. Share it with your friends, maybe give them some tips. Subscribe for more and um, please like the video with the button below. Happy New Year, thank you.